All right, so we knew these calves were in here. We knew it was a breeding pair. I'd heard them the night before while I was actually recording the sounds. And when we got in here and got set up, I wanted to go ahead and run some prey distress sounds for two reasons. One, I thought there might be a cat in there yet. I thought I might call it up. And then also I wanted to throw out just a little bit of prey distress sounds at these cows to make sure they weren't triggering on prey distress sounds. I always like to include that. And so that's what I did. I started with this sound called broke pecker, which is a woodpecker sound. And after several minutes, nothing had shown up, no cats, no cows. I decided to go right on into what I really thought we would have our best luck calling these cows with, which was vocalizations and breeding sounds. I've been recording some new howls, some new breeding sounds, some new fights, and I really thought that these particular cows would be good to use this on because they were older cows. This was ground that we had hunted for years and years. It had been really beat up, and so I wanted to run some breeding sounds. I, I felt like they would be less educated to that than they would be to anything else. So I ended up picking out some female imitation hounds, some stuff that I had just recorded. And the two series of female imitation hounds that I chose are the one that's playing right now, which is Little Bee Hot Hounds, Hot Female. And then I followed it with the one that's about to to start, which is Bougie Stutter House. And this is a re really unique female invitation house. You can hear the stutter in the house. I really like it. I've called up a lot of coats with it. And I always like anything that's different and unique. And these stutter house are definitely unique because you don't usually hear the skips and little cadence, uh, the, the stutter cadence that this particular cow does when she dies. So uh, I really like it. But in order to do a true breeding sequence and have female imitation house, you need to stack those female imitation house together. And that's what I did with these two series. It ended up being a series of about 12 or 13 hows. And then when I got through the female imitation hows, I answered with the how, the group how that's playing right now, which is uh, MFK Hollerback Group. And I don't know what it is about that particular group how, but really like to vocalize to it and they also like to respond to it, come into it. We've killed a pile of cows off of this particular group out. And sure enough, just as soon as this group out finishes it up, that bleeding pole can't take it anymore. They have to chime in out there in the thicket. And sure enough, they do. They chime in right out there where we thought they would be and they get pretty worked up out there. They they howl around out in the thicket for a while, and I can tell that they're pretty agitated. They're in and the block. I so to I get feel in. like that I can probably use some of these breathing sounds to get these goats called in. So once they the settle down, this thicket, get through, right there, those taller cussing lines. me out out there. I end up Maybe picking on a uh, breathing sound called female breathing growl chirps, and it is a true uh, breeding sound sequence with growling and chirping and several different sounds mixed in it. And so that's what I end up going to once they go silent in the thicket. I'm about to play that female breeding growl chirps right here.
Now you'll notice right here that I go right back into a coaxing sound. It's a rodent. Woodrat is the name of the sound. And I only run about 10 or 15 seconds of this sound uh, just to mix that in there, just to see if maybe they're triggering on that. And then I go right back to the breeding sounds. And this is where I will kick on the hot females. Uh, it's a hot female fight uh, called girl fight. Two hot females, real worked up, real agitated, and they are getting with it right here. And that is what ultimately calls in this pair of coats. And both old coats, they come in. And after uh, this hunt, I ended up sending off one of the teeth and getting the layered uh, aging done on it. And this tooth come back as 12 years old. So that's about as old as they get in the wild. When you're killing coyotes and calling coyotes in with that much age on them, you know you've got some good sounds and you know you're making your setups and stuff right. So those are, those are the ones that are pretty rewarding to call in and kill. As these coyotes come rolling in, they are completely convinced. Well, <laughs> you didn't want to get out in the snow, but it was worth it. It took us a little while. They didn't want none of the prey distress. Coyote vocals and a brand new sound called Girl Fight. Walk over and drag that thing up, and we'll take a look at him before it gets completely dark. Good shot. I know you shot through a pile of crap to get him. It's thick in here, and they were in a even bigger thicket. Called them through it though. I about couldn't get her out of the house because it's, I think it was 18 when we started. Probably colder than that now. A pair of them come in. Had a crosswind, it was perfect. We had a crosswind set up blowing from the edge of that thicket that she's in kind of back out to our right. That's why we set up like we did off this edge, hoping they would be in that thicket. I wanted to get in the block on the other side, which is where they howled. But wind was wrong for it, and it would have been a, a little harder to, to get to. So we come in from this side and made it work, called them through. I'm talking about an extreme thicket 
you hear me talking about the briars and the bullshit that stuff that them coyotes come out of snake get tangled up coming through that mess Good size coat. Did you kill the male or the female? I think that's a male. <laughs> that's probably why we didn't call the other one back up. Hold him up. Kind of oh, you got a touch of the mange, don't he? Yeah. Well, you ain't got to hold him up. Big coat. Go down there with him. Oh. <coughs> oh. Ooh, he's like a hundred. Old coat? Yeah. He has like no teeth really. That's why he wasn't running in here on that distress stuff. I mean, like literally. <laughs> You got him. The other one looked like a pretty coat. Yeah. I'm sure it was a female. It is an old <laughs> rascal right there. That is an old rascal. That coat. I mean, he don't have a canine left mm -hmm. in his head. He's got a piece of one, and the rest of them are smooth wore out. I'm talking about ears are chewed off. Heavy rascal, too. Man. I'll show you all that in a minute, but that's as old as they get right there. That's why it took a little more than prey distress to call this joker up. We've hunted this area for years. I knew these coyotes were here, wanted to save it for the last stand. We made one more stand right across the highway here, come into this spot. And like I told you, while she was walking out there, we hit the edge of this thicket and kind of wanted to be on the other side, but the way the wind was and everything, we sat right here, had the wind coming out of the thicket, blowing back out here into this more open thicket, still thick. We're sitting probably 40 to 50 yards off the edge of it. Got the MFK Edition Fox Pro sitting right here beside us, just offset to uh, keep them from looking right at us. And we started to stand out running through prey distress. Thought there might be a bobcat right here too. Uh, otherwise, I would have went right to vocals. But we ran probably probably 12, 15 minutes worth of uh, different prey distress sounds, targeting a cat or a coat, ran through some birds, two or three different birds, nothing. So then I jumped over to some brand new howls that I just recorded. I played, uh, Little B Ready House, I played Little B uh, Hot Female, uh, I think I played Bougie Stutter House, and I was gapping those about two minutes apart, and they're all female house, female imitation type house. I played through them, gapped them a couple minutes apart, and uh, then a, a sound that works real well for us, I followed those house with Hollerback Group, and paused again, and it was still probably a minute or longer yeah. behind the house and probably just part of being educated goats they lit up out there couldn't take it anymore that pair chimed in and they howled and we gave them a little while to see if they'd show up didn't show up so i played female uh breeding growl chirps just played one little short series shut it off again then i done like maybe five or ten seconds of woods rat and shut it off waited just a minute or two and I was starting to run out of battery on the camera so I went ahead and kicked on a brand new sound uh, called Girl Fight. My buddy Jamie Terry Dayton for Kyle Crickenberger they just won their third elite and that was the sound they were smacking them with so I knew I needed to try it. I kicked on Girl Fight, let it run through one series, paused it and as soon as I hit the pause I saw you raising your gun. I could see their legs coming through the thicket and they walked right right up in the wrong spot. <laughs> 
and mowed this big male down. I figured we would call this coyote back up if she could have killed. If you can kill that female first this time of year, breeding season, um, all of our coyotes are in heat right now. So if you can kill that female, a lot of times you can call that male back up a minute or two later. But anyway, we got one out of the deal, and it is an old rascal. But to get any of them sounds, any of the stuff you see us using, the apex shells that she smacked him with, go to the website, MFK Game Calls. That's where you can get this stuff. And uh, if you like watching us doing a lot of killing and finding out how we're doing it, how we're setting up sequences, we don't keep any secrets, just uh, subscribe to the channel. It's the one you're watching right now on YouTube, MFK Game Calls. You cold? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the teens today, so... Uh, I had a little trouble getting her out, but here she is. <laughs> What'd you think? It was fun. I'm just glad we caught him up before I froze to death. <laughs> I think we've I think we've been here right around 30 minutes when we finally yeah. killed him. Yeah. But I think if we'd have started with the vocals right off the bat, we would have killed him. You know, within from the time we went to vocals till the time we killed the coyotes, we were probably 10 minutes into the set, and that's because I was waiting. Or it might have uh, been where we. Or we probably should have yeah, made but I think, I think we done right coming on this side because I got to thinking about, you know, that wind was kind of out of the northwest, yeah. and so it was blowing. I wanted to be on that other side, but I think it probably worked out worked out better. Uh, obviously worked. True. <laughs> Appreciate y'all watching. We're going to get out of here while it's still daylight. Good shot. Glad you came with me I, for once. you want to put this up there? Yeah, I'll show them. Oh my gosh, his smell. 